Greetings and welcome to this installment of Introduction to Solid Modeling using SolidWorks. And we have made a few tools, including a saw and a screwdriver, and now we're working on the crescent wrench. And the crescent wrench has four parts to it, and this is the set screw that uh, holds it all together. This one's pretty easy, as you can tell by the fact we only have four features over on the left. And we start off with a revolve sketch. Looks like an extrusion, but it's not. And then cut out the top there. Then we cut the threads. Then we finish them off. And this area is what we're going to focus on for most of this time. So here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is again pick out which I want to have as my front, top, and right. Well, when I did the handle, my front plane was the big flat area and the top plane pointed up. So I'm going to keep it that way. So on my front plane, I'm going to sketch my set screw. And I believe that for the set screw, the origin should be at the very point. So I'm going to zoom in here. And one of the first things I should do for a rotational or a revolved boss base is put in a center line. So I'm going to revolve a cross section around the center line. Now you have to put everything on one half of the center line. Any uh, lines across over the uh, SolidWorks will say, oh, not allowed to do that. I don't understand it. I get confused. So I'm going to take this, come over here, here, and then the uh, set screw itself has a slightly domed top. So I'm going to make a curve. Uh, come back around. There it is. And then it's good form to make sure that it's all connected in one solid loop. Do not assume that it's going to connect it for you. It's not a good assumption. It might make it a thin part and you'll get all confused. Uh, just connect the dots. Make sure you have a single loop that an ant can crawl around and, and go on infinitely and not have an option to turn around or to uh, take a left or a right, make a choice. Okay, so uh, my dimensioning scheme here, this is going to be one. here to the center line. I could make a radius here, but if I drag it over here again, point 0.185, and then have a dimension from here to here. I think I clicked on the wrong thing, so I'm going to cancel out. Dimensioning from here there, there we go, and we want that to be 60 degrees, and there's only one thing left, don't quite know uh, where this part is, and that's all the way down the line, oops, didn't like that, and that needs to be 0.96. Still doesn't know where that part is. So let's figure out why you grab onto at some point. Oh boy. Oh, uh, that's why. Keeps moving this point around. Oh, that's a classic problem. You assume that that center point was on this, this line here, but it's not. So just make them coincident. Everything is black. So I'm going to exit my sketch. 
And since that sketch is already pre-selected, going to Features, Revolve Boss Base, it knows exactly what to do. I had set it up with a line ahead of time. It assumed 360 degrees, which is what I was hoping for. So here's our first feature. Now I could have extruded a cylinder and then put in a chamfer at the bottom here and then cut a dome on top, but uh, I think that going the revolved boss base route captured my design intent better and may have been a little less finicky than trying to make sure everything fit on top and bottom. Yeah, we had a couple of issues, but now it's exactly as I had intended using only one feature. Okay, the next step is to cut the slot in the top here. So we'll go back to the front plane and sketch on that front plane. Move this here. And let's see which plane. We've got top plane. I'm going to hold my control key down, right click here, select midpoint, and I'm going to make them collinear. Well, I guess I'm not. I'm going to right click on that line, go to select midpoint, and hold my control key down. Grab onto the top plane, make them coincident. And now I know that this rectangle will always be right on that spot. Can't move up or down on that. So it'll be symmetric. That's just another way of making things symmetric. I will also want this box to be tangent at that line. And so I made that. This box dimension is supposed to be 0 0.08, and this one 0 0.043, and that's great. I've got my sketch there. I'm going to Features, I'm going to Extruded Cut, and I didn't have it pre-selected, but I can just select here, or I can select on it here. The most recent thing I made, so there it is. So I'm going to use the extruded cut. There we go. And go to instead of blind through all both, cuts through everything that's there on both sides. There we go. Now for the tough part putting in the threads. In order to cut threads into a shape, we actually use a swept cut. What that does is it takes a particular cross section, moves it through a path, and cuts material away from that. So we need two things. We need a cross section and we need a path. So I'm going to start with a cross section. I'm going to sketch again on that front plane. want to have it something like this. I want a triangular cross section right down here. And I want it to be 60 degrees. Pretty good guess there. And these threads are supposed to have 32 threads per inch. So I want them to go one right on top of another, so I want this to be 1 over 32. When the next one comes up, it's going to be right next door, and the next one comes up, it's going to be right next door, and so on. So let's see how this works out. Now, what I want to do is I want to start this whole thread thing way out here, 
in the middle of nowhere, just like a machine tool would cut in starting out here. You could start it in here and move it out. That has its uh, advantages, but I like to think about it like a lathe, starting out here and moving in. Also, making sure that it starts out here ensures that your cut that comes in here is going to be smooth and not end somewhere kind of here, and then you don't really have threads because you can't get it started. So, next step is I'm just going to make this vertically oriented to that, and I'm going to make these sides all equal. Doesn't like to do all of those and the 60 degrees, so I'll just delete the 60 degrees. It's fine with me. Okay, so now that that's all taken care of, then that's black. I can be happy with that sketch. And the next thing I'm going to do is make the helix. Now this cross section, we want to go through a helical sweep. So we need to create a helix. You do that by going into curves, helix, and spiral. And then it's asking for a, a plane or a planar face to do a sketch. And we want to do that uh, right in the same area as our triangle here. So I want to make Ah, that's where I want to do it. I want to do it on a plane that is perpendicular to our sketch. And our right plane serves nicely for that purpose. So I'll go over here to the right. And all it's asking for, after you've done all this, I go, what am I supposed to sketch? Well, they don't keep the directions up over here, but I'll tell you what you're supposed to sketch. Very simple. All you need is a circle. So we're going to... Actually, we don't even need to create a circle. We're just going to convert entities and see if it'll work. There it is. And that's all we needed to do was create a circle. It just needs to know the diameter and location where it's supposed to start its helix. But wait, there's more. Okay, it has a starting angle at 315 degrees here. I don't like that. I would rather it start right. Uh, it starts at zero here, so uh, we've got to find out where it means to start, and there it is. It's starting here, right where our cross section is. It's just good to do that. Sometimes it can work if they're offset, but uh, try to make it work so that they're right together. Notice how this one is going the opposite direction. So we go reverse direction and keep it clockwise, counterclockwise. Just turns it the opposite way, but make sure you got it going into our part in a clockwise way. And we don't want a uh, helix taper, but that can come in handy sometimes. Uncheck that. And now it gives you options of constant pitch or variable pitch. Well, uh, most of the time you'll want constant pitch. So we'll, we're going to keep it at that. Variable pitch opens up some other options. We have pitch and revolutions. So how many times around do you want it to go? And how often do you want it to come come around? So this will say, OK, uh, the pitch is the distance from edge to edge. It will come back around after this distance. Well, we have specifically uh, called out a pitch of 32 threads per inch. So that's where that 1 32nd comes. So the pitch is the inverse of the threads per inch. Aha, uh -huh. here is our new pitch. And notice how it's much smaller. Instead of pitch and revolution, we are going to use height and pitch. We already know the pitch. And the height is given to us on the diagram as 0.19. And so it will go as many pitches as it needs to until it has gone 0.19 inches, and then it will stop. OK, 
Okay, so that's setting up the helix. Now, if all goes well, all we need to do is select the sketch, hold the control key down, and select the spiral, and we go to our swept cut. And it automatically knows that sketch three is our cross section and helix spiral is our path. So there should be nothing else we need. And I already know that we were going to have a problem because it says show preview and it's not previewing. So I have a feeling it's not going to do this for us. Okay, sweep operation failed to complete. The problem with this design is right here, this point. As it comes back around, this point meets up with this point and creates a very tiny thickness, and it doesn't like that. So we are not going to be able to do our cut sweep this way. There are two methods to get around this. First off, we can take our sketch 3, and instead of point 0.03, 1, 2, 5, I could make it 0.0312, and this should, just that tiny little change, should make it work for us. So let's see if it does. Might need a little bit more cut off, maybe go to 0.031, but let's see how we do. Swept cut. Aha! That's all I did, was I just changed that one little bit. And that works. Another option that I don't like as much, but it will allow you to keep your numbers this exactly the same, is to make a small box on top of here, like this. And then either delete this line or simply make it for construction. Then you won't have that problem, but um, I find that putting additional lines does not uh, contribute to design intent. Meanwhile, here are our threads. One last thing is what to do about this. This looks just kind of ugly. You can do a variety of things and make it look a lot nicer, but I'm going to create an extruded cut. I'm going to choose that plane. I'm going to convert the entities here, here, and here. And I'm going to exit my sketch. I'm going to go through all. And make sure that the inside's being cut. Yeah, it is. And this looks a little bit better. It looks as if you're cutting this through, and then here the tool comes up and out. Okay, well, I hope you learned a few things on this. Again, we went over how to make a revolved boss base here, and the reasons why to make a revolved boss base rather than three separate features. And then we did a simple cut extrude, doing the through both sides. Then we did the cut sweep with all of its difficulties, but this is how we can cut real threads in. I wanted to remind you that when a computer does this, it doesn't actually make one nice sweep. In fact, this is a whole series of tiny little cuts that it works through. And you can see that now. You see the tiny edges here, here, here. Um, it's just a whole series of little cuts. And that's why we have something called cosmetic threads. Cosmetic threads are there to avoid making uh, hundreds of little cuts when all we wanted to do was call out a particular tapped hole or a particular thread and we didn't really need to model it. We also focus on the spiral and how we have different settings. We can go by the different heights and pitches, pitches and revolution, height and revolution. Just need two out of those three to specify the helix. Went through some of the settings here, making sure that our start angle matched up with our sketch. 
put that together with our sketch to make our cut sweep and then finished it off with this little cut that at least just makes it look a little better. Okay, so I hope this helped and on to the rest of the crescent wrench.